It's been a pleasure uh, to be able to put all these on over the years. And so uh, tonight I'm going to be talking about my Pecha Kucha instinct. And so that, that happened back in 2009. And it was the kind of this uh, feeling that I had. It wasn't the first time, it wasn't the last time. I was like, is this something that I can do and kind of bring to the community? And I reached out to Tokyo, got the rights, and then uh, eight years and 35 programs later, it was beautiful for me to see so many different magic moments. Uh, not necessarily that basic instinct moment where it's scandalous or murderous or sensational, but it was just like this instinct where, yeah, I want to build community. I want to have these conversations here. I, I feel like this is like a family gathering. So I wanted to have these stories told by friends, strangers, uh, people I read about in Miami News Times. And this idea of connecting with millions of people around the world was really exciting because this was the beginning of the internet and uh, people were able to send emails all over the world and you know, Pecha Kucha was just a website and so it was just this basic website that you know, captured uh, the attention everywhere. So we know that cavemen were sharing stories around the campfire and then it's kind of progressed the storytelling to having uh, projectors in the living room, much like this picture here where we're remembering the kid's birthday party on the projector screen. And then now we have social media and we've got videos. We have uh, all this social media that actually came after Pecha Kucha got started. So Facebook, Instagram, Meetup, MailChimp, were all after Pecha Kucha had started. So that was a really uh, interesting technology hurdle for me early on to like, how am I gonna pull this off? So uh, I just needed email lists. And so what I did was I partnered with the Wilsonian to design museum uh, in Miami Beach. And the first one was called Temperature Rising. And I uh, was fortunate to have a lot of really interesting speakers as much as the, the interesting speakers are here tonight. And they had a, a media list, and this is actually the first picture of that event. And it really captured uh, the, my heart about like why I wanted to keep on doing this, just to uh, have kind of the mother and the son here, uh, and the people's eyes just kind of amazed at some uh, chef's ability or s some creative uh, soul like myself on the, on the left, and Alan Hughes on the right. Uh, I, I literally and figuratively use temperature rising, it's just kind of where the temperature is hot. And so Alan had a restaurant in the design district and Wynwood, it was called 190, and he had just gotten a couple of James Beard awards and he was kind of hot at the moment, he's still hot, uh, doing various cooking initiatives. I'm going to run through a few events in the past that I did. So this was uh, Future of the Cities with the young patrons at the Science Museum. It was one of the last events that they had at their old location. And it was kind of a launch pad for uh, several new initiatives that were going to come forward, such as the new museum. And then also Meg Daly was launching the Underline. And if you haven't already enjoyed the wonderful Underline uh, th that is kind of bringing new life into the streets of Miami, she used Pecha Kucha you know, as, as a platform to let her know the kind of the vision she had for that. Then um, a little personal, uh, three is my sacred number. So for Pecha Kucha 33, I was like, well, why don't I choose sacred as, as the theme, theme there? And uh, Vera was a friend of mine and she had just, she has her master's degree from Harvard Divinity School and here she is. And she was talking about how in darkenment and enlightenment are the same sides of the coin. There's spiritual value in periods of darkness as much as there are spiritual values in times of enlightenment. Uh, in the picture in the back there, she's pointing out a black Jesus and then also a white Jesus uh, to kind of prove her point. 100 Degrees in the Shade was an uh, ambitious initiative by Jane Hart. She was a pioneer when Wynwood was Win Hood. And you, and you wanted to make sure that you had sneakers on in case you needed to run. Uh, but now it's totally different now. People are actually living here. Uh, so she had this survey of um, so many different artists. If you, if you were an artist at that time, she wanted you in the show. So we almost had one fatality, which was kind of funny. So Air, uh, Kevin Arrow is, is on the right, and he was talking about his uh, analog and digital uh, creative endeavors, and he didn't breathe for six minutes and 40 seconds. So I found Kevin laying on the floor there, kind of taking a deep breath in, deep breath out. 
which is funny because it then it kind of transitions to this next one, which I think I was, uh, all these kind of were very personal to me. I, I chose the theme of resilience, and this one was at the Bakehouse. And uh, I had asked Virginia Jacko, she's the president of Miami Lighthouse for the Blind to present. And here she's looking directly into the camera, but she's legally blind. This is her seeing eye dog. And she left this profound message with the audience. She said that we create our own disabilities. And so she did you know, what I'm doing here blind. And I think that that was very profound. One of my last uh, Pecha Kuchas was at the Duville Hotel. It was really surreal because I had put this presentation together uh, when the Duville was still standing. And then now it's all demolished. So this is uh, in the entry of the Duville. And then I uh, teamed up. It was all about Obscura uh, artists and thoughts in Miami. And so Alejandro Mend Mendoza was doing these giants in the city and inviting artists to do big inflatables. And so we took over the grand ballroom of the Duville and then incorporated his uh, giant in inflatables. This is my last slide. I just wanted to make sure that I kind of bring this instinct idea home with, you know, the, the, the the arch of uh, instinct is Charles Darwin, the, the great naturalist, and this is one of his famous quotes. The very essence of an instinct is that it is followed independently of reason. It's just this quiet thing that comes into your mind, and you should definitely follow it with your heart. Thanks for letting me share. Yeah.